So I thought I'd show you how to turn a 2D drawing into a 3D model. So I've brought in the DWG, and I'm copying and pasting the, some curves from it into a new design. Uh, what I'll do next is choose the Pool tool, and we'll use this to start making 3D geometry. Maybe trim out a couple regions here that are just air, so we can keep track of what's what a little better. And now I'll grab these regions down here and pull that out to a 3D model. All these faces came in as separate ones to you know show the what the original underlying curves are, but I can merge them all together. And uh, we're going this is an assembly, so we're gonna have a bunch of components. I'm gonna go ahead and make those components now and I will name them fast forward a little bit through this part. But the basic idea is that you can build a bill of materials for your design before it exists. Okay, so most of these parts are revolved. To do that, I will rotate this guy around. And let's make it blue and transparent. There's a little extra surface I had in there that I can just clean up with our fill tool. So next, uh, I'll do something similar to model the gasket, just to grab those two regions and uh, grab what I want to revolve around, and then I will revolve. This set of techniques was pioneered this summer by our intern, Max, who I challenged him with coming up with how many different ways he could turn 2D things into 3D things, so you're seeing the result of that. Um, so one of the options is we can turn a whole bunch of stuff into 3D at once and then break it up into different parts later. So we'll grab all this remaining stuff in an axis and then uh, tell it to go. So now we'll have one big part that actually will break up into three parts conveniently in just a second. Now before I do that, I'm going to model uh, the hole because the hole is kind of split up between two of these parts. I'll just uh, box select uh, some of the insides here. And that's the basic shape of the hole. And create the hole in 3D. And now I will just subtract that from our model. So this is just a convenient way to reuse that. I, I could have directly cut this out, but it's a little easier to see what's going on if you hide one of the solids. So now we'll turn that on and we'll use our uh, tool here to cut them apart and delete that region. So now I'll use our split tool. We'll split these guys into two parts. You can see there are two there. Then I'll grab this face under here and split it again into two pieces. So now we've got three different parts, and we can put them where they belong in the various different components. Okay, well I left one out. We were going to model this screw here, and this is kind of neat because it starts to hint at techniques for doing more complicated drawings. So let's grab the faces of the screw, and um, again, we'll rotate it around. And another technique that we can use is, you know, Sometimes you have different views that show different things, so you want to coordinate them together. So now I'm going back to the 2D drawing. I'm going to grab some lines from that other view, 
and I'm actually going to use assembly tools to assemble the images, if you will, of the different views together. These just become surfaces in space claim, so I can um, just make these concentric and align to each other. And now I've got the right information. Now this drawing actually didn't include any information about the depth of this hole, and you know, really I would probably download this from a website of my supplier or use uh, our trace parts library to model something like this normally. But here, since I already had the information, it's pretty fast to make an, a 3D bolt. And uh, we'll just put this, uh, this socket uh, out of it, something like that. So if we go back and take a look at our little assembly, um, might help actually to color these so it looks like an assembly. All right, so now we can sort of tell what parts what. Now, I, I'm, it, right now I'm in a bit of a situation because we actually have four holes here and um, that are supposed to go around. But of course, the holes are in two different parts, and there's a screw in each hole. So I'm going to use our move tool to copy this, and I'm going to copy the hole in each part along with the screw at uh, the same time. Copy it that way, copy it that way. There we go. So just to kind of on trip, you know, maybe we still want to have a drawing that documents our 3D version of this. And then I'll roughly throw some views together here to uh, come up with the drawing that looks like the original. This was a cross-section drawing, so I'll turn that view into a cross-section view. And uh, if you take a look at the cross-section, you can see we've got our holes in each part, the bolt in all the right places. Now, if you go back and look at the drawing for a second, that was an 18-inch hole. Let's you know put a dimension on here. Start that process. Oh, and incidentally, our drawing views are 3D, so if we want to do some modeling, just realize that there's another problem here. There's this hole that needs to get poked out, so I can borrow faces of the model to cut out the hole. Okay, so now I'll throw that dimension on. And uh, this is, of course, 457 point something millimeters. I had my unit set to millimeters, but that's okay. We'll just set it back to inches. And the other drawing, they didn't have the inches at the end, so we'll leave it like that. Now you can see this is the exact right size, 18 inches. So this is obviously a very simple assembly, but these ideas, especially the idea of taking the different views, putting them together in one model, and um, and using those to make a 3D part work pretty well. And we've been doing this with a whole bunch of drawings. So if you're making some other things here for the challenge, maybe you can show me what you can turn to 3D from uh, 2D.